So we have our sockets up on our client and our server as we're working on our chat program here. And now we want to communicate through them. And it turns out the way that we do that is with streams. This is why we cover the IO streams before we cover networking. Because in the socket class, there are two key methods that we care about. They are called get input stream and get output stream. And they give us an input stream and an output stream, respectively. So all the things that we could do with the input streams and output streams that we had been doing with files, we can now do those with sockets and then we're communicating across a network. So we have our server, it accepts, and that gives it a socket, and we have our client, and it builds a socket locally. Now what I want to do is I want to get the input streams and the output streams. Sock.get input stream. Sock.get output stream. Now, of course, remember, input streams and output streams just give us the ability to read a bunch of bytes and write a bunch of bytes. Mm, this might not be exactly what we want. We probably want to wrap these in some ways, to decorate them, to be more useful. In the case of the output stream, I want to have a print stream. Okay? The print stream is a type that allows me to basically add some print line methods onto there, print and print line. Um, for the input stream, things are a bit more challenging. Okay, I really want to be able to do a read line. And there are kind of two ways that I could do this. One, I could wrap this inside of a scanner. So a Java util scanner has a next line. It also has next int and next double. It's, it's useful for general text input. For our purposes, we only want single lines. And it turns out one thing the scanner doesn't have is the ability to tell me if there's stuff there for me to read. And I want that, okay? I might not necessarily use it for the client, but I will wind up using that definitely on the server. And so to keep our code simpler, I'm going to use something called a buffered reader. Now, the problem with the buffered reader is this doesn't work because the buffered reader is a reader, not an input stream. Remember, readers work with characters and input streams work with bytes. Fortunately, there is a type that converts from one to the other and this is called an input stream reader. So we can take our input stream, wrap it in an input stream reader, and now this is actually a subtype of reader, which then we can wrap inside of our buffered reader. And so this has a read line method. It also has a method called ready that will tell us whether or not it is ready to, to read input. So what we want to do here is I want to read from the user a line. Let's do a print line, type something. We're not going, we're not writing the full chat app yet. We just want to be able to talk through our socket here. So I read this and then I'm going to write it out, out dot print line input. So that should wind up being sent across to the server. So on the server side over here, I actually want to create these same types of input and output streams. And then I want to read something in. So I'm going to make a string. I'll just call it S. And I will call read line, which is the method that we wanted from our buffered reader. And then we'll go ahead and print line the client said s and then I'd like to send something back to the client letting them know we got it so we'll just say got your message well back over on the client side we should probably read that so we can say in dot read line and we'll also just put that in a little variable called s over here. Server responded. And then we'll add s. OK. Let's see what this does. So we run our chat server. It's sitting there accepting. We run the client. It gets to here. now. Note, this is currently on the chat server, so this is not waiting for me to type something in, and that's because the server 
wound up printing this got the socket after the client had printed out type something. So Eclipse is automatically shifting us between these. If we were running these from command line, we could have two different consoles up and and we'd actually be able to see very clearly, but don't type this into the wrong uh, window because if you type into the server, nothing happens. So we'll type in the message, does this work? And the server responded, got your message. What happened over on the server? On the server side, it said the client said, does this work? So indeed, it appears that this does work. So we have some simple communication going between our client and our server. Now, they happen to be on the same computer right now, but it's really not hard to change that, make it so the server is on a different computer, and then you put that computer name in here. So let's talk a little bit more about what we want to do for our chat program. So on the chat program, I would we have the ability to connect. So in some ways, we've connected here. In addition to the ability to connect, I would also like to have it so that I can, if I just type stuff into the server, it will go. If I type in like uh, a colon quit or something like that, I want it to terminate the connection. So basically that will stop the client and, and close out the client socket. I also would like to have somehow the ability to do private messages. Um, to make it so that we can send something to a particular user. So every user needs to have a name in this. Uh, that's something we don't have right now. Uh, and then I want it so the server keeps track of the player, of, of the client's names, and then we should have some way of typing in things, uh, maybe a colon P for private or, or something else, that allows us to specify who we want a message to go to and if that happens, then it only sends it to that user instead of to everyone who is connected to the server. So we're going to come back and we will work on adding that type of functionality. That's basically the analysis of, of our problem. We want to add that type of functionality and see what that actually requires here for our, uh, our chat server.